In this video, I want to talk about the intuition behind Jensen's inequality, which, if you remember, can be written that the expected value of some function g of x is always greater than or equal to g of the expected value of x. And this is true if and only if g is convex. So in order to explain the intuition behind Jensen's inequality, we're first of all going to talk about an example. And the example which we're going to talk about is, imagine that we're throwing a die. So a die is a cube which has got numbers 1 to 6 on it. So we represent that value, which we call x here, and it can take on the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. And if it's a fair die, then we can assume that the probability that we obtain that particular value of x, which is this latter x here, is 1 sixth in all of the cases here. So we're assuming it's a fair die. And assume that the way in which this particular game works is that you are paid an amount which is equal to x squared. So that's the value on the die, all squared. So in this first case, it's just going to be 1. The second case, it's going to be 4. And it's going to be 9, 16, 25, or 36. And a question that you can ask yourself here is, how would the payoff from obtaining the expected value of x compare with the expected payoff from playing the game? First of all, in order to answer this question, we note that the function g here is actually represented by x going to x squared, because that's the transformation that we make from our value on our die to the particular payoff here. And we note that in this example, because of the particular form of g that we've chosen, which is x squared, our function is upwardly sloping at an ever-increasing rate. And so here what we have is we have that the first derivative of g is greater than zero and the second derivative of g is also greater than zero. So this is a convex function. Because of the fact that g here is convex, we know that we can use Jensen's inequality to answer our question. This right hand side here is just the payoff that we would obtain from the expected value of x, so payoff from expected x. And the right hand side here is the expected payoff from actually playing the game. So we write here just from game. And it's the expected payoff from playing the game because of the fact that we're taking the expected value now of, or g of x is just x squared. So we're looking at the expected value of x squared. And hence, Jensen's inequality tells us that the expected payoff from playing the game should always be greater than or equal to the payoff from the expected value of x. So let's just double check that this is the case by actually computing the right hand side and the left hand side. So first of all, we can compute the payoff from the expected x. And to do that, what we need to do is we first of all need to actually work out what the expected value of x is. So the expected value of x in this example is just given by summing across all potential values of x, our discrete random variable, of x times the probability that our random variable equals that particular value. So in this case, it's just going to be 1 sixth times 1 plus 1 sixth times 2 all the way through to 1 sixth times 6, which if you work it out, actually works out as 3.5, which I'm just going to write as 7 over 2. Then to work off the payoff from the expected value of x, all we do is we square this particular value, because remember that the payoff is just given by our value of x squared. And if you actually work this out, it comes out at 12 and a quarter. Now what we can do is we can compute the left hand side, and remember that this is the expected playoff from playing game. So in this case, we are working out 
what is the expected value of x squared because of the fact that x squared in each of these individual cases here denotes the amount which we're going to obtain if the die was rolled at that particular value of x. And we can do this the same way as we did before, which is now we're summing over the individual values of x of now is a weighted sum of x squared times the probability that x equals that particular value. So if we were to sort of write out the first couple of terms of this sum just above it, it would just be 1 sixth times 1 plus 1 sixth times 4, and we could keep going until we did 1 sixth times 36, which is the last term here. And if you work this out, it actually comes out to a number which is pretty close to 15.2. And hence, we've shown that the left-hand side here, the expected payoff from playing the game, 15.2, is in this case greater than the payoff from the expected value of x, which is 12 and a quarter, which is exactly what we predicted from Jensen's inequality.